Sometimes this world has a way of pulling the rug out from underneath you, just when things are starting to look good. My friends all say that if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. So cliche, I know, but they're right. I have, I have had, had the worst, worst luck. Where do I begin? I have made so much lemonade in my lifetime, thanks to the apparent bargain on citrus that life has. It keeps on handing me. So cliche, but it's true. Let's put it this way. If an organization was selling 500 tickets to a raffle and I bought 499 of them, I would not be the winner of a new 50 inch flat screen TV. Oh sure, I occasionally have a random bit of good luck. Yesterday, I got seven chicken nuggets in my six piece chicken nugget order. Hashtag bonus nugget. Oh, and just last week, I bought a raffle ticket and won a new TV. Well, we didn't tie it down very well in the back of the truck when we went to go pick it up and uh, you can probably guess what happened. Eh, who needs a TV that big anyway? Maybe my luck is so bad because I haven't done much good with my life. But don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not a bad person. I mean, when I was younger, I did a lot of stupid things. And I'm not proud of this, but the local police and I were on a first name basis in the latter part of my teenage years. I've gotten better as time goes on, but I definitely haven't won the Citizen of the Year award. It doesn't really bother me that things don't always go my way. I've kind of gotten used to making all of that lemonade. I take it all in stride. What else can you do? We have so little control over so many things. But in spite of all the bad luck, I'm surrounded by good things. Just a few years ago, I got my degree, which led me to a wonderful job that I love. And then there's my job. Ugh. I've worked in the IT department at my company for almost 25 years. Not only has the job changed so much because of new technology, but these kids who come in fresh out of college think they know it all. The sad part is they do know it all. It seems like they know more about these things than I do. I, I can't keep up with it. The worst part, all of my friends are gone. Off to work at some other company in some cubicle that's 16 square feet bigger. I don't have any friends left at work anymore. I have great friends. Amazing friends. Friends who would do anything for me. I've lost track of how many times my friend Sarah has driven me to the ER for all my illnesses and broken bones. <laughs> Some of my best times of my life were just sitting with her in the ER, in spite of the reasons for being there. Oh, my most recent episode? <laughs> I twisted my ankle on the balance ball at the gym. <laughs> Thank God Sarah was there. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning at 5.30, we are at the gym. Us single ladies need to stick together for motivation, you know? <laughs> oh, and um, disregard what I said earlier about chicken nuggets. Don't tell Sarah. Now that I've told you some of the bad stuff, let me tell you some of the positive things I have going for me. I have a wonderful family. My wife Jenny and I have been married for 18 years. We have two children. Uh, Alyssa's starting sixth grade in the fall and Alan will be a sophomore in high school. They're great kids, and they've never given us any trouble over the years. How many parents could say that? Jenny and I are so proud. Yes, we know how lucky we are. And guess what? <laughs> we have another baby on the way. A girl. Surprise! <laughs> we haven't decided on a name yet. I haven't really been in a hurry to get married and settle down. I've been so busy with work and staying fit eating healthy, helping serve at the local soup kitchen twice a week. Really hasn't left much time for dating or other things. <laughs> Plenty of time to find the man of my dreams, right? Plenty, Plenty of, of time. time. I figured I had plenty of time to, to do some good, to make up the indiscretions of my youth. Plenty of time to, to laugh off all of my bad luck. Plenty of time to find a new job. Plenty of time to spend with the family. Yeah, 
I thought I had plenty of time. <clears throat> it's your heart, my doctor said. I'm afraid it's not good, Tom. <laughs> All of a sudden, I didn't have plenty of time. Time became a precious commodity. It's been two years since that conversation. I'm still trying to live each day to the fullest. Doctors can't tell me how long I have to live. They've said I should just quit my job and, and spend time with the family and just enjoy life. But I can't quit my job. As much as I hate it, it's the one constant thing I have in my life that occupies a third of my day. Today, Today things, things changed. changed. It started off like most days. I got up early to head to the gym. I woke up and did my regular morning routine, which always includes a nice hot shower and a big hearty breakfast. I kissed Jenny goodbye and then I headed off to work, stopping at Starbucks along the way. Sorry, Doc, there are some things I won't give up no matter how bad my heart is. As I was heading down County Road, I got a text message. It was from Sarah. I knew it was from her because I have a special notification sound whenever she sends me a text message. It's Sloth from a Goonie saying, Hey, you guys! We've watched that movie so many times together. I arrived at work and grabbed another cup of coffee. Hey, IT miracles don't happen without caffeine, people. As I was typing up my notes from a network outage we had the day before, my phone rang. I really do try to avoid texting and driving. I only took my eyes off the road for a second. Sarah was running late. Okay, see you in a few. That's all I typed. It was my transplant coordinator. After two years of waiting and thinking that it could never happen, there was... A donor heart. For me. He told me to get over to the hospital as quickly as I could, as the surgical teams were already being assembled. I called Jenny and she said that she'd meet me at the hospital. Finally. A bit of good luck. Can you believe it? My run of bad luck had finally culminated into this one moment. A moment in which I took my eyes off the road for four seconds. When I looked up, I saw the tree. But it was too late. My, my life, life changed, changed in, in an, an instant. instant. One final stroke of bad luck. Finally, a bit of good luck. A new heart. It was a long surgery, and poor Jenny was so scared. But guess what? I'm alive and well. It took a few weeks, but I eventually started getting up and about. Slowly at first. Started with a, a few steps across the room, and then walked down the street a few hundred yards. And eventually, long walks through the trail system behind our house for hours on end. But you know what? I had a good life. A great life. I made the most out of every single day. If I wanted an ice cream after my workout with Sarah, I had it. I just didn't tell her about it. <laughs> I smiled. I cried. I cared. I took chances. I laughed off every bit of bad luck that came my way and turned it into something positive. Today, I walked down our driveway to grab the mail. There were some bills and a few get well cards, but amongst the pile was a letter from the Organ Transplant Network. I was not prepared for that. I sat in my recliner for probably half an hour, staring at that envelope before I got the courage to open it up. Cindy. Her name was Cindy. I wish I could tell her how much of a difference she's made. All I really hope is that despite a life of ups and downs and a string of bad luck, 
is that I made a difference in the life of the people I came in contact with. Jenny and I have settled on a name for the baby. 